I'm very humble to speak to all of you this morning. This is the World Water Week, and last night I was in the amazing evening where the, the ultimate prize in water was handed out. Uh, so I know this is the premier water event in the world, and I'm a total newcomer to your event. I, I'm a first timer, so I should be very humble uh, talking to you. So all I can do is give you the eyes of a newcomer when he looks to water and the voice of business that's going to make some noise at what the newcomer sees. So I apologize for any you know, obvious errors in my speech, but I'm here to call for revolution. I like the end of your speech. We need revolution, boys and girls, and we need it fast. So here we go. When I think about water as a newcomer, I think about planet Earth is talking to us through water. Because you can't open any newspaper today and not read about Arctic ice melting or droughts in the US, uh, wheat production, or floodings in other parts of the world, or acidification of oceans. I don't think the planet is talking to us anymore. I think she is screaming at us. And water is the language she is using. And I know there are many scientists in the room. And I know you have been building incredibly smart and intellectual models to predict all this. But if you talk to people like Johan Rockström, all the models are much more conservative than the noise the planet is currently making. So we're running out of time, is the newcomer's view of water. And of course, your conference has been talking about the nexus of water. <clears throat> to be totally honest, I had to look up in the dictionary what nexus actually means. Um, but you all seem to be very comfortable with the language, so <laughs> I'll, I'll use the word so that you've, you know what I'm talking about. But as a simple business person, the nexus of water will mean we're going to be in a fight over who gets water for what. And this is not going to be a pleasant fight. It's going to be a fight between regions, localities, between countries. I mean, I was in India recently, and many of the wars between India and Pakistan in the past, not recent past, but far gone past, have been fought over water. If I look at food, energy, fiber, water, and ecosystems isn't even on this page, it's all going to scream for water. Drinking water is one of them. And we need governance. We need models that can deal with this competition in a regulated way. And the theme you chose this year, food security and water, deals with one of the complexities. But energy, fibers, ecosystems <clears throat> are certainly going to be on the agenda very soon. And I think energy is on your agenda two years from now. Um, so this is the thing we need to deal with. And in WBCSD, the amazing institute that I'm now involved with, we're doing a lot of work on Nexus, and we will continue to do that. But there's another statistic. And I don't know, many of you will have been in the dinner last night. And again, thanks to the organizers. It is an amazing dinner, an amazing event, and truly amazing that the honor that was uh, paid to the, uh, the prize winner. But in that dinner, um, there was this, this speech of the head of the prize winner who kind of made a calculation that each of us in that dinner had just consumed 1,800 liters of water. You know, just so we, we, ate, we ate rain, well, I don't know, venison, I don't know what we ate. You should really eat vegetarian in these places, but okay, that's, I'm not supposed to say that. Anyway, that's... Um, so apparently this dinner consumed 1,800 liters of water for each person being there eating his dish. Well, there's another statistic for you, which I find a lot more scary. Every 12 seconds, a child dies from contamination, from not having access to sanitation. So I did a little calculation myself. You know, we were in this beautiful hall with the king and the queen of Sweden, the prize being awarded, amazing entertainment, beautiful food. We were there for four hours. In that four hours, 1,200 children died from not having access to sanitation. 
I don't know how many people were in the room, but I guess three times as many children died as were people in that room. And we were enjoying ourselves. Now, what is morally wrong about this? And what are we going to do about this crisis? So at WBCSD a few years ago, we've talked about a thing called Vision 2050. We've defined what is sustainability all about. And I'm sorry, we, we are business people. We can only deal with short one-liners. So this is it. Sustainability is when 9 billion people in 2050 are all living well and all together we live within the boundaries or the limits of the planet. So this deals with population growth from 7 to 9. It deals with the eradication of poverty because all people need to live well, admittingly not get to wear the same suit that I wear, but at least not die from hunger or lack of sanitation, have access to education, to healthcare. And all together, we need to find a way to live within the boundaries of the planet. And most of you will know better than I do that already today we use about 1.4 planets, and this will grow to three, four times what the planet can renew each year once we're at nine billion. So this is the definition that the progressive businesses in the world have two years ago agreed upon as, the, as, as what sustainability is all about. This is the target where we need to go. And the sustainability debate is not new. <clears throat> 1970, the Club of Rome emerged. I think 1972, actually, here in Stockholm, was one of the first global meetings around it. Of course, Rio 92, Rio a couple of months ago, <clears throat> and these are all fantastic meetings, and, and I'm sure the Stockholm Water World Water Week is, are fantastic meetings, but the big question is, do we achieve enough fast enough, and, and that's going to be what I would like to talk to you about now. So business is doing more and more. About 10, 15 years ago, business started getting involved in discussions around water, in discussions around the broader sustainability in a kind of a philanthropic way, a side event to their business. They were giving money to good causes and sometimes skills. The progressive businesses today, and, and many of them have been here this week, and PepsiCo was rewarded, have really put forward a view of integrating sustainability in the core of their business. Every business decision these companies make is measured against not only the financial, but also the sustainability performance. And the big challenge ahead of us, and that's where WBCSD will play a major role, is to now involve all businesses, not just the progressive ones. So, believe it or not, I believe that business is a major provider of solutions. And here on this page you see a couple of the examples of what I'm talking about. There is, of course, drip irrigation, and Jane in India has done a lot of work in that. Reducing water consumption by 30 to 70 percent, doubling or more the crop, the yield of the crops, um, lowering the cost for the farmers. PepsiCo, the winner of the Business Award uh, this week, uh, with its direct seeding approach of rice, a 30 percent reduction of water use, 70 percent reduction of, of greenhouse gas emissions, again lowering the cost. And all these other examples are out there. So there are examples, and business is able, and I think an important message to all of you, willing to provide solutions. That doesn't mean that business thinks or is arrogant enough to believe that it can save the world on its own. We do call, and we do call loudly on all of you, that we need collaboration. We need collaboration between business, science, and governments to get this right. So for that reason, we have recently published a document which is called Changing Pace. What policies should we be discussing in dialogues that will accelerate business in implementing solutions? And when we look at water, we need to have conversations about how do we make policies coherent between water, between the food area, the energy area. We need to talk about the true value of water with policymakers. We need to get involved in the SDG discussions around water. And that is an invitation that has been going out to all the governments around the world. So let's just all read this slide for a second. Because I think you all know why we are here. I think you, even better than me, 
know what we need to do. I don't think we'll have any disagreement on when we need to do it, which is now. You know, we, we don't have time anymore to talk. We need now. So this is very interesting. You know, the, the why, the what, and the when have been solved. This is done. So there's only one question that has, is, is remaining, and that is how are we going to do it? And, and with no disrespect to anyone intended, we have too many nice pet projects with pilots of interesting solutions. I don't mean that part of the how. We figure that out as well. We need how are we going to implement solutions at scale. And my only call on all of you is if you come back next year, and next year the, the theme is collaboration, which is even more appropriate the theme, please come back with a mindset of how are we going to implement these solutions at scale, because we're running out of time. So what is business going to do to bring scale to the debate? Well, business traditionally has been extremely good at managing financial capital. There will be business leaders in the room. You cannot ever teach them anything when it comes to ROI, EBITDA, cash flow, valuation. I mean, these people dream this type of stuff. Business is a little less comfortable when it comes to natural capital and social capital. You know, the, the business people here will be able to talk about natural capital because water is a main asset in the natural capital balance sheet. But generally, business isn't. That is what we're going to have to change. So the business revolution that is underway, which will take about three to five years to get up to full steam, is called true cost, true value management. And we can, we can talk long, we can talk short, we need to get to the true value of water, which is an interim step to get to the price of water. We need to start pricing water as we start pricing CO2, as we start pricing all the other externalities, and we're going to whack them into the P&Ls, into the balance sheets of businesses, and then we will get all the business involved. So for that reason, WBCSD, under the leadership of Joppe, has published last week in the run-up to this meeting the third edition of Water for Business. If you haven't seen it, download it, because this is the attempt from the business community to make sense of water in a sustainability way. And in this book, tools have been commented, have been edited, and placed in what role does water play in, in the activities of business, and how can business manage its water performance. And if you read that book, you'll, you'll find quite eloquently that there is lots of progress, that there is many businesses who are willing to engage, but that the toolkit is not appropriate yet. We don't speak one language, we don't have all the same definitions, we don't even use all the same metrics. And that's why, in the end of my talk, I'm so pleased that next year, collaboration will be the theme for your conference. I truly believe that if we're able to build bridges between science, governments, business, and the, the civil society, that we will come up with one language to manage water, to avoid the crisis from deepening, to avoid further loss of unnecessary, unnecessary loss of life, and to really make a difference in the fight against all of it. So thank you. We will be announcing an MOU with Siwi soon. So uh, we will be back. See you again. Thank you.